ever wondered if you could make a wheelie cheat device for your bike? Yeah, me too. So recently I've been wanting to get into electronics a bit more and also the coding side of it. So I bought this Arduino starter kit from Amazon. Uh, it's a relatively cheap kit and it comes with all sorts of different uh, sensors, LEDs. Uh, it comes with a breadboard for prototyping, uh, resistors, switches, everything. Um, and it comes with this Arduino Uno board. Now, what caught my attention with this kit was that it comes with a six axis gyro and accelerometer board. And it also comes with the code to read the values from this board and uh, translate them into numbers on the screen uh, inside this Arduino. Now it also comes with uh, a servo, an electronic servo motor, which are usually used um, in radio controlled aircraft. And it comes with a code to control this servo. So what my plan is, is to read the tilt values from this accelerometer board, translate it through the code to this servo, and then this servo will pull the back brake at the correct point uh, just before the bike goes over the balance point. Now, I'm not sure how difficult this is going to be, but considering I haven't done a whole lot of coding in the past, uh, probably quite difficult. So let's get to it. Right, so I've wired up the six axis gyro and accelerometer board uh, using this configuration into this Arduino using this breadboard and I've uploaded the basic code. Uh, so let's check if this works. Serial monitor, it should show. Oh wait, hang on, I might have this set wrong. There we go. Is that focus? See it's showing the pitch value there. And if I move the gyro board, it measures the angle. Might be better if I plot it on the graph. So when I tilt the board, see the value on the screen changing? So it's working. Right, now I need to find a way to output this pitch value uh, to control this servo. So here is the very basic prototyped wheelie device. Uh, the code is extremely simple. What I've done is basically told it to read the pitch values from this accelerometer board and then at a certain angle it will activate this servo. Now, I've set it to 45 degrees, so at this angle, nothing will happen. Then once it gets to 45 degrees, servo starts to move, and it will continually to move in a linear uh, rate up until 60 degrees. So between 45 and 60 degrees, the servo will move. Now, because this doesn't run any kind of PID loop control system, it's literally just a linear value from the pitch to the servo. Uh, it won't be able to hold a wheelie for me. So in other words, I won't be able to just sit on the bike, lean back, pedal, and it will just hold a perfect angle for me. Basically what this will do is act as an emergency safety device. Uh, if I accidentally you know, go to flip the bike, it will essentially pull the back brake just before the bike's about to flip and prevent me falling on my back. So it's more of a safety device uh, for learning rather than you know, an automatically wheelie cheat device. So now that I've prototyped this, I'm going to uh, get a smaller Arduino board um, and then solder everything up and probably use a larger server to pull the rear brake and um, make some 3D printed brackets. So let's get to it. Right, so I've got all the electronics mounted on the bike now. The servo is mounted on the handlebars. It's not connected to the rear brake yet um, because I need to do some testing. Um, everything works. I've 
had a few issues with the Arduino and the servo. Uh, I've managed to kill two servos in the process of uh, programming this digital servo. Uh, this Arduino was set up to move 0 to 180 degrees of travel of the servo, but this servo can only move about 80 to 90 degrees, I think, um, or at least that's what it's set to. So it was trying to go too far on the travel and ended up burning the servo out. Anyway, I haven't connected this to the rear brake just yet, um, but I've mounted my GoPro here because I want to get some footage of it uh, moving the servo whilst wheeling to see whether it reacts when I get near to the balance point. I might need to make some adjustments to the angle. Uh, it's still set to activate the servo at 45 degrees, but because the frame of the bike is at a slight angle, I might need to delay that angle a little bit. So let's take it for some wheelies and see if it activates the servo. Right, so I'm in the garden so that if I do fall off the back, um, then it's onto soft grass. Uh, I shouldn't do right now because I'm pressing the rear brake with my finger rather than the servo. Um, there's not a whole lot of room here and the grass is quite bumpy. So it might be a bit tricky to hold a constant wheelie. Um, but let's give it a go. So I'm trying to force it past the balance point, so I have to press the brake. Um, that way you should be able to see on the GoPro when I have to press the brake. Um, because it's not really much use if I just keep it at the balance point without pressing the brake, because that's not very useful data. So do a few more wheelies and then I'll link up the servo to the rear brake. Okay, so I've linked this up with a very basic wire um, configuration. You should be able to see it on the GoPro footage. Um, and basically the reason why I've done it with just a very simple wire is for testing purposes. And also so that I can pull the back brake and there's not like a, some kind of linkage in between that will stop me pulling the back brake. So the wire can obviously hold the tension, but in compression, I can still pull the rear brake if I have to. So let's see if this works. I couldn't feel any, I couldn't feel any braking just then, so. I think I might need to um, adjust the length of this wire a little bit. It's pulling the brake a little bit too late. All right, let's see when that kicks in. So the brake isn't, brake isn't dragging. And then as soon as I lift it up. Okay, it's kicking in a lot earlier now. Let's give this a go. <laughs> it's so weird uh, trying to wheelie without having my finger on the back brake. I should probably feather my finger just over the brake in case it does flip. <laughs> so I try and flip it. Right, so there, the brake's activated. Right, so just to give you a demo that this is working, I'm not touching the rear brake. In fact, I'll hold it here. I'll hold it here. So I'm not touching the rear brake, and as I lower it, the brake will release. Right there. So the tricky part is getting that angle to match the balance point on the bike. Right, so I'm out here on a relatively quiet road. Um, I'm not sure how well you can tell from my microphone, but it is extremely windy right now. There's a huge field right next to me, so I think I'm gonna have more of an issue balancing side to side than front to back using this rear brake. But I've made a few modifications. Uh, I've adjusted the angle so that it kicks uh, in, sorry, it moves the servo at the right balance point now. And I've also increased the voltage uh, to the servo. These are rated to 7 volts and it was running at about 5 volts. So I'm not sure it was getting the full amount of torque to pull the rear brake. So I'm going to give it a test on tarmac. Um, should give a more reliable balance point on the bumps. It sort of varies a lot. Um, and yeah, see if I can get some decent results. 
of, uh, of it bringing the front wheel down. Here we go. Oh, yep. Helps if I start in a lower gear. <laughs> right, I could feel that kicking in very early. So let me try a slightly lower gear, see if I can push past it. Right, yeah, that's slightly too early on the balance point. Try and keep my arms a bit longer. So obviously, if I pull my arms towards me, it activates the brake earlier because the bike's at a steeper angle. If I push my arms away from me, it activates later. So I'm basically controlling the back brake with my arms, which is interesting. Uh, I do need to delay the angle slightly more because I'm not quite getting up high enough to keep a proper wheelie. Okay, because I don't have my laptop with me, I've just adjusted the length of the wire. Let's try that again. Keep hovering my finger over the rear brake just in case. Oh, yeah, I had to press that. <laughs> right, so it's activating really late now. If I go to flip it, it does pull the rear brake. Okay, that's slightly too late. Oh, yeah. I didn't touch the rear brake that time and it brought the nose down. Let's try and show that again. I can feel it dragging. This wasn't quite the tilt angle for it to fall back. There we go. Oh, I had to pull that one. <laughs> It's quite hard to go against the natural instinct pulling the rear brake. I can feel it, I can feel it actually pulling the... I can feel it pulling the rear brake. Makes it a lot harder to pedal. However, it's really hard to put your confidence in a bit of electronics that I've made in about an hour's work. There we go. Oh. I think this is gonna need a lot of tuning and testing. It's working. Just, uh, I wouldn't really call it a, uh, what do you say? A cheat device. <laughs> it certainly helps to be able to, you know, have that instinct to pull the back brake uh, naturally because I probably would have ended up on my back a number of times already. <laughs> right, let's unplug it and then give it a wheelie. Too low of a gear, made a fall out of myself. So let's conclude this project. Does this wheelie device work? Yeah. Would I recommend it to a new person trying to learn how to wheelie? Probably not. Does it help you wheelie your bicycle miles on end? Definitely not. You see, there's a few different things going on here with the uh, wheelie device, which are very hard to control. A lot of you will probably be thinking, Tom, why don't you adopt similar technology to a Segway? That has uh, two wheels and you stand on it and there's a balance point and it self-corrects itself. You see, the problem is between a Segway and a bicycle is that with the Segway, um, you are in line with the balance point. In other words, if you change the mass of yourself, for example, you gain weight, lose weight, or someone else hops on the Segway, it doesn't matter because your center of mass is always in line with the uh, wheels at the bottom. Whereas on a bike, you are off center from the actual balance point because you have to counteract the weight of the bike. So for example, 
If you weigh less, the bike has to be at a steeper angle to balance yourself. It's all about balancing the torques around that rear wheel. So a heavier person would then have to have the front wheel a lot lower. And not only does the weight of the rider affect the balance point, the length at which their arms extend also affects the balance point. So you've got to somehow tune this electronic device to the exact weight of yourself and also the exact length of your arms, considering you won't bend your arms. So as soon as you bend your arms, it throws the balance point off because it will now bring the, the bike up to a steeper angle, which will cause the brake to kick in. And it just, the electronics doesn't know that you've pulled your arms in. So the only way to do it would be some ridiculously complex thing, which would measure your, measure your arm length, measure your weight, and all that stuff and it's it's just it's possible but very difficult and a bit ridiculous to be honest now some of you might be thinking tom i've seen motorbikes with wheelie devices which cut the throttle when you get to a high enough angle and yes it is slightly more possible on a motorbike due to the weight of the motorcycle now a motorbike weighs between 100 to 150 kilograms depending on what type of bike and what engine it is but the added weight to the motorcycle means that if the rider extends or retracts its arms, then it has less of an effect on the angle of the bike. It's all about balancing the torques around the rear wheel. If you have a heavy rider, he needs to be quite close to the balance point. Whereas if you have a light rider, he needs to be quite far away to produce the same amount of balancing force, the torque, in that direction to counteract the bike or the motorbike. Now, the difference between having a heavy bike and a lightweight bike is that if, you have a, if you're on a bicycle, a lightweight bicycle, if the rider shifts his weight just the tiniest bit back, the, the bicycle has to move a lot to counteract it. Which means that obviously it varies the angle of the bike quite a lot. So if you extend your arms and retract your arms, the bicycle moves a lot more than you do. Whereas on a motorbike, it's most likely that the motorbike weighs more than the human. So if you extend and retract your arms, you actually move backwards and forth more than the motorbike does. So that's how you can get away with having the gyro and accelerometer board on the bike because if you, you know, if, if you change the weight of the rider and also extend retract your arms, it doesn't affect the angle of the bike as much as a bicycle. I hope that makes sense. Now I'm sure all of you that are already subscribed to me are wondering why I've been testing this wheelie device on my electric bike um, and why didn't I just wire it into the electric motor to cut out um, when it got to the balance point. And the main reason is I prefer to test it using the rear brake um, rather than messing with the electric motor um, because if the electric motor freaks out and you know something goes wrong with the electronics, it could go full throttle and be quite dangerous. So I'd rather just have the servo you know, pull the back brake because what's the worst that can happen when it pulls the back brake? It just brings the front wheel down. Whereas if I wire it into the throttle on the electric bike and something goes wrong, it could be quite dangerous. Now my original end goal for this project was to wire it into the electric motor on my electric bike um, and set it up so that I could literally just uh, go full throttle, pull the front wheel up and then it would just hold a constant angle uh, wheelie as it accelerates. However, I'm not quite sure I want to do that just yet. I think I need to do a bit more research before I do do that, um, if I eventually do, um, because it could end up quite dangerous, especially with my amateur knowledge of these Arduino boards. Uh, I need to do a bit more research into PID controllers. Um, I know quite a bit about them because I studied them at university uh, and also built quite a few drones, quadcopters and, and various aircraft. Um, however, I'm not quite sure how to configure them in the Arduino board. So that's something I want to learn in the future. I hope this project sparks some interest in some of you cyclists. And if uh, there's any cyclists that have more electronic knowledge than me, which they most likely are, um, and want to have a go at this, then I'll be very interested to hear your results. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please click subscribe. A huge, huge thanks to all of my patrons for making these videos possible. I honestly couldn't do these videos without me. So if you enjoyed my videos, it would be greatly appreciated if you could support me on Patreon. Uh, link will be in the description below. Thanks once again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.